is what is making this a really big concern. Is they are squalling for a fight. Like the gentleman said, none of this impeachment stuff is working. Nothing they've thrown at Trump is working. They're getting desperate. They hate this situation because America is getting better and better and stronger and stronger. And so they are furious. They are. And they're trying to try to impeach Trump because America is doing so good and they hate that. Now they're trying to start something with this gun confiscation. The thing about it is, for some reason, they have played this out in Virginia. This is something that has actually been rehearsed in Virginia at some point, and it's documented. I watched the longer videos. It's documented that they've actually rehearsed this. So this is something that they've had in mind, and now they're just trying to use it. And they never thought they'd be in the position. They thought Hillary Clinton would be in office and they could do what they want. That didn't work out for them. Trump is still in office. People have still got their guns. That's right. So they can't take them over. Almost every major country in the world has gun laws. They don't have them in the hands of the people. Australia was like a pretty conservative. You thought that they were kind of like yeah. American cowboys or something, yeah. but they managed to take their guns away as well. I think it's important to say that as soon as the guns are taken away from the good people, the government enslaves or once, puts them in jail. Once they got that, then they can start passing and doing other things. One of the first things that goes is free speech. They start redefining everything until sooner or later they've got it all. They say the Second Amendment is there to protect all the other amendments. Yeah, our founders must have thought so. They just got finished fighting a bloody war. They hoped, I'm sure, that it would never come to this. And I'm hoping and praying it doesn't come to this. Yeah. The media is so controlled by the Democrat Party and the left-wingers that they don't want anybody to know that they're confiscating all the guns in Virginia. They don't want anybody to know that. Well, what they're hoping to do is they're hoping to produce a big incident so that then they can really start chiming in and they can really make up their case. They love that because then while they got these bills that they're ready to pass, they say, see, we needed to pass these bills. Yeah, because they want to put everybody in jail or something. It's a very volatile situation. What they've encouraged people to do is show up, gun owners to show up, don't bring your gun. weapons or anything like that. Don't look intimidating. Smile a lot. Smile a lot, but talk to your legislators. Tell them how you feel. We're hoping to do the very same thing here in Kentucky. The main take-home message to me from all of this is you've got to vote. But as has often been said, there are consequences for elections. I bet if the people in Virginia had another chance that they vote for freedom rather than for gun control. If they could imagine what was getting ready to unfold, they would definitely. Well, don't you think the people in the streets in the country know that Virginia is in trouble? It must. Within two weeks, within two weeks, this organic movement just kind of came yeah. up took over. You have these people who are willing to stand up and even go to jail to protect their right to own guns. Well, absolutely, because we had a program about how Hitler took guns, and as soon as he had the guns, then he was in complete control, taking away all their rights, all their freedoms, all their property. Anybody that disagreed, they would just be missing in the middle of the night. And there's no mistake, we are the big guys in the world. The economy is still probably twice the size of anybody else. I don't know how big China's is right now. It's getting bigger all the time, unfortunately. But we're the shining beacon. If that beacon goes out, who's going to come to the rescue for Absolutely. all the rest Absolutely. of the world? They say if America loses the right to bear arms, there's no place else to go. And we have historical evidence that says one of the reasons that the Japanese didn't even attack on the West Coast yeah. was that they knew the Americans were armed. The man in the street is armed, or in the country. This book that we've talked about called The Killing of Uncle Sam, which is kind of what we're talking about, the killing of America. 
by taking away our guns. And this is a book written by an evangelist, Rodney Howard Brown. And we've had this on the program before. Rodney Howard Brown gave us, I think, a hundred copies. We gave them out first come, first serve. This has been in the works for a long time to try to get rid of America, get rid of freedom, and bring in the Antichrist. I still think this has a biblical counterpart. This idea of taking away guns is to prepare for the Antichrist. Oh, I forgot to mention, Dr. Simon, this will blow your mind. Unfortunately, I was up very late editing these things and stuff, and there was some videos that I would love to show you, but we don't have time for that. But there was one video, there's an actual ad that's being taken out in New York City, in the UN. The UN is hiring. They actually want to help come confiscate. The UN wants the to help. UN, they're hiring people. You wouldn't believe it unless you saw it. You said that there are Americans who are willing to go to jail mm -hmm. rather than confiscate somebody's gun or give up their own gun. There's some people that realize that this is a life and death situation. We are in a struggle. It's a tired old phrase. This year is more important. We're on the edge in terms of whether we're going to survive or not. I think we ought to make a DVD of this program. Because it's so important. There are probably people listening today that realize that this is an important subject, that confiscating guns is a very bad thing. They're trying to do it right now in Virginia. Now, we were talking to a state representative this afternoon, right. and he said they're getting ready to pass a law in their county that says you can't take guns. And there's going to be a rally. We definitely need to mention that. That's the 7th, January, 8 o'clock in the morning at Frankfurt at the police station. At the police department. Start a caravan and let our legislators know that we believe in the Constitution. We believe in the right to bear arms. Try to prevent the same thing that happened in Virginia from happening here in America. What this does is it reinforces the fact that other people know. If there's one truth that you could point to when you're dealing with evil, it's to shine a light on it. Shine that light on it. It's like cockroaches. They start to scatter. Well, that's what we're trying to do today, and we're about out of time. But I did want to say that this is all in the Bible. Yes. That they're going to take the guns and put the Antichrist in control. Somebody said, well, not on my shift. Not while I'm here, I'm going to fight it. Somebody said, I can't do everything, but I can do something. With God's help, I'm going to do it. And we can think about coming to that rally on January 7th. Which is Tuesday. This coming Tuesday. Yeah. Wow. And it's in Frankfurt, the state capital. Right. We're going to start a caravan at the police station. They'll go to the capital. And then we'll talk with the legislators. Right. And we need about a million people there <laughs> right away. Yes, we do. Now, let me give a phone number. If you have questions about what we're talking about, the number to call is 895-5025. The area code is 502-895-5025. And then if you want a copy of this DVD to hand out to all your neighbors and friends and relatives, Call that same number, 895-5025. Give us your name, address, and phone number so we can get this out to you. This ought to be the subject of every sermon in church tomorrow because the Bible says we need to contend for the faith. The scripture says, any man that does not provide for his family has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. We're talking about Christianity here, and really, Christians should be standing for our Constitution because it was written from the Bible and it's all about the Bible. We need to stand against it. This is part of our checks and balances. Okay, we're out of time. God bless you. Tune in again next week. Hi, I'm Dr. Frank Simon. I'm an allergist and family doctor, board certified in both allergy and internal medicine. 
I specialize in allergy, headaches, sinus, hives, cough, asthma, hypertension, and diabetes. We're located at 1404 Browns Lane near Norton Suburban Hospital. Our phone number is 895-5088. We can see you tomorrow. Hello, this is Frank Simon, and welcome you to the rest of the news. We're going to be talking about a rally that was in Frankfurt this past Tuesday, the 7th. There were about 500 people there to support the Second Amendment. Of course, the problem is in Virginia, they are trying to confiscate all the guns. That's correct. We're going to show you just a few little. It's about as correct as it can be. They do allow a little exception. We're going to show you some footage. No sound, though. That was taken last Tuesday, January 7th. Oh, good. There you got it. Go ahead and show, tell Dr. Summer. This is a map of Kentucky. There's a rally. And the yellow counties are the ones that have passed Second Amendment. The yellow ones mean that they're actually got it on their court to talk about it. So they're close to getting it. And I checked last night. This morning, I think a bunch of them came in last night. We're up to 27 counties now in Kentucky that have declared themselves sanctuary counties. Second Amendment sanctuary counties. Yeah. Well, that is tremendous. There are only 120 counties. How many did you say? 27. I'm quoting a news source, so I haven't actually got... Sanctuary County? Yes. Wow, that's good. They're cool. moving very fast. And that means that... Somebody says you can't own a weapon in Kentucky. This overrides it, the sanctuary county, Second Amendment. Let's talk about Virginia, though. The governor will have, since the Virginia National Guard says it's our responsibility to take the guns away, then they said, I'm going to call the patrol, Virginia patrol. So what would you do in that case? If Texas Roman came in and they randomly stop a car and says, you have a gun, you say no. But if they know you're a concealed weapon, because they could probably figure that out if you are, well, then what's that going to do? Well, you know? right now, there's not one united approach. Now, we came up with some information. Odom County was actually working. They had a petition drive, and they might be one of the 27 now. I don't know for sure. But theirs actually had some teeth in it. They relied on the U.S. Constitution as the supreme law of the land. And then they cited Supreme Court cases that also gave credence, gave support to each gun owner. Each county, there's not a uniform way of doing it right now, but it does make a statement across the board. We're right behind Virginia. Well, it seems to me that we need to mention Lumber, mayor of New York City, and he's got millions and millions of dollars, and he put millions and millions of dollars into getting anti-gun people in office in Virginia. It's very important that everyone vote because if the pro-take-away-the-gun people, if they can, they want to take away your freedom and your Second Amendment rights. And, of course, if they take away your Second Amendment rights, he probably wouldn't have any other rights because the Second Amendment is necessary to support the First Amendment, all the other amendments. The Second Amendment right is the something to all of our rights. It's like the key. So let's go back to the beginning of time, recorded in the number one book seller in the world, the Bible, recording of the first murder, Cain mm -hmm. slew Abel. And what happened? He didn't have a gun. So it's not the guns. It's right. the person, that the perpetrator behind the gun. And what we need to realize, when we take away all the guns, who's going to have guns? The government. And the crooks. They're going to get them somehow. People say they're not. Well, that's not true because they don't obey the laws now. They go right. into places that are supposed to be gun-free zones. And to be quite honest, if I was a gun-carrying person, which I'm not going to tell you if I am or not, but if you are out there, I would take them in wherever you want to take them. If it says gun-free because, first off, you have the right in the Constitution to argue that for. That would be your chance. Stand up for whatever you want to do. That'd be your choice. But if we don't have the guns, then who has it? The government, which means they control you. The government will control you, and the crooks will probably go in with the bad, tyrannical government because 
they could work hand in hand. Let's talk about the shooting incident in Texas about a week or ten days ago. In the church. What? Cue up that next video. Got some video about on the that. response time. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah, that's important. Yeah, this is one of the Columbine survivors. I saw my first dead body when I was 12 years old. It was a mistaken identity where some coward killed another human being because he thought that he disrespected his cousin. I've lost a brother to violence. I had no interest in guns growing up unless it was a BB or cap gun. I never wanted to hunt. Never wanted to actually own a firearm. This changed when I moved into a townhouse near the Richmond Raceway. One night I was awake and my neighbor had someone beating on his door. I looked out the window. There was someone in a vehicle with the engine running. There was a guy in front of it with a shotgun. There was another guy beating on the front door with a semi-automatic handgun and another one going to the back door. I called the police. Long story short, the response time was 15 to 20 minutes. The perpetrators had left before the police got there. Luckily, the neighbor never opened the door. But what made me purchase a firearm was the fact when I went back to my upstairs bedroom, I heard the police officer ask over the radio who called in the call, and they gave him my address. Okay, now, what that video was really showing a citizen in an urban environment, he lived in Virginia by the raceway, Richmond Raceway, so I'm assuming that that's definitely Virginia. But what it's showing is it takes a certain amount of time. He timed it at 15 minutes. That was the first concerning thing. The second thing that prompted him to actually get the gun was the fact that they were broadcasting his name and oh, address. God. If you watched it further, he would say he slept at his mother's house a day. And then he also had an incident. So he went and got a gun, but then later on, somebody was stealing something from one of the vehicles. He called the police. They had time to leave and go, leave and go, and leave and come back again three times, 30 minutes, and they just happened to be there before the police came. That shows you what can happen in an urban yeah. environment. I have my own story to tell as far as in a rural environment. You could just imagine that. I spent some time on a farm or whatever. At that time, they might have had three or four county cops that were covering stuff from all over the county. You cannot get someone from one end of the county to the other end of the county. You're going to expect at least 50 or 20 minutes. You have as much need for protection in a rural place. The event can be long over. If you look back at the church in Texas, the two people that were killed were killed within six seconds. And they were the people with the guns. After that six seconds, a third person took one shot and killed him. The bottom line is that response time is a big thing. We are right. the first responders. Not the police. Not the police. We are the extension of the law. And that's actually in the Kentucky State Constitution. It goes into it a little bit more. And it says we are allowed to actually keep arms well, to protect about, ourselves and property. It's not just allowed. I want to be a protector of myself. I don't want the government taking care of me. Right. I want to be able to, if someone's in my house and they've got a gun at me or a knife, you think I'm going to sit there and call 911? Oh, come help me. Well, I'll be dead by then. Yeah. I want to be my protector. That's right. That's right. When at all possible. Well, review again that church shooting. That was, what, about a week or two ago? It's a case of a good guy with a gun killing a bad guy with a gun. Exactly. It just, the person that actually did shoot back, he shot very accurately, obviously. It was one shot in the head, but he was trained. Yeah, he It doesn't was. matter if you were trained or not. Possibly up to five or six people were in the congregation that had weapons. They were all heading that way. Well, so what if you weren't the most accurate when you have somebody who's trying to kill exactly. everybody, have some? And, and let's take it a step further. They're all talking about the Democrats especially. What do they want? They want us not to have guns, but yet they have people protecting them. That's correct. So That's if right. they have people protecting them because they can afford it, and what do they afford it from? Our tax dollars, they're not going to tell me that I can't have a gun. And I found it interesting, that gun rally. I wasn't able to go, but I saw the sign that says, come take this, come get this. It was the 
Eight hour fifteen. Yeah. And I'm like, boy, that was a bold statement. They should be afraid of us. They are people, they are servants to us. We are not anymore. That man with the gun had not been in exactly. the church, he would have killed several other people. Congregation members, yes. It's important for every church to have a designated person that's going to defend the congregation. We have a lot of people carry guns. The one church a couple years ago that killed, what, 26 people? It was a small parish there in yeah. Texas also. Remember, they all died. If it wasn't for the person next door, knew that something was wrong. I think he heard something, and he ran over there, and he stopped it. It could have been even more carnage. Now a member of the congregation, he became a member of the church because they he was the next president. door. Probably. Bless his heart, he ran over and oh, It's it. very important, I think, to realize that guns save lives. And people say, oh, well, it's bad. But really, if you have a gun, you can protect everyone in your church. Or your home. Or at a or baseball your park. home. Or That's your the, children. The least at the baseball park. Because it can happen anywhere. Movies, parks, everywhere now. McDonald's. And Antifa. Antifa. They carry guns. They have knives. Everybody needs a weapon to protect themselves. You don't have to. If you don't want to, it's your right not to. Right. You're not going to tell me I can't have one. It seems that a person with a gun protects himself and others. Second Amendment protects all the other amendments. I agree with that. Actually, I think I would amend it. I was sitting there thinking about that before. I would say that your first protection is God. I know you guys know that, but that's an important step. If God's yes. not on your side, there's no help. That's right. Well, a lot of people would say, well, if God was really on our side, why is there so mass humanities problems and this and that? It's because of sin. And because they took God out of our public exactly. schools. You want to know why he's not there? It's because you took him out. They got rid of God, so they have a lot of problems. The one other thing that I want to mention from this first rally that they had in Kentucky, and I was trying to find the clip on it, but I wasn't able to find the exact clip. But what they pointed out was from 1776, from the very beginning of the Revolutionary War, all those guns were considered assault weapons. Initially, they were military weapons. If you look back, you find that the same right. thing in World War I. Those guns that our military had are actually the guns soldiers carried. We got access to them as well. Maybe not everything, but a whole lot of weapons start out as military yeah. grade. We had one other thing before you run that. I just want to make sure that everybody understands. They're planning a second rally, January 31st. In Frankfurt? In Frankfurt. And one in Virginia, too, on the 20th, right? We'll get to that one. I just wanted to make sure that the rate we're going, by the time that second rally comes up this January, we should be in very, very good shape. Right, you mean with the Second Amendment? With the Second Thank Amendment. Biden is betting his whole campaign on hoping that some extreme right-wing and left-wing Antifa groups collide and crash into each other. And the oldest trick in the book, and what happened to a great extent in Charlottesville, Virginia a few years ago, is a bunch of leftists dressed up like white supremacists had their own rallies, got real white supremacists, nationalists, but also just traditionalists to show up, and a lot of press. Antifa came in and attacked, funded by Soros and Alexander Soros. I have the documents right here, I'll show them to you. That's on record. And it's a fact that they're the main funders, they don't even deny it. And then Trump was called a white supremacist who supposedly endorsed it when he never did. He said there were bad people on the right wing side, bad people on the left wing side, but there were a lot of good people on both sides that just came to see what was happening. I want to bring Matt Bracken up here, uh, and I appreciate him coming on. He was going to host this hour, but he's always happy to have me run over and just get his take on the magnitude and get his view on what the Democrat plan is with this move and now why they're holding back the articles. And where you see this going, and Ruth Bader Ginsburg saying they may come in and try to disqualify the Senate when that's not their prerogative or their branch of government. They've got some dirty tricks planned. What do you think the prognosis of this is? What do you think their attack plan is? Best-selling author, researcher, enemiesfarmdomestic.com, former Navy SEAL Matt Bracken. If I was them and I was evil, I'd be false flagging, blaming patriots and trying to trigger war. I know you've written books on those scenarios. Are we entering the hour of the false flag? The big event that I see coming up is going to be January 20th in Richmond, Virginia, a bigger event than Charlottesville, which was the Unite the Right rally. The narrative is that it was all 
Nazis and Klansmen racists. That's the ability of the mainstream media to shape a narrative. Now you've got this flashpoint in Virginia where 85 out of 95 counties have declared themselves Second Amendment sanctuary counties. Liberals that run Northern Virginia and Richmond control the state. They're actually talking about whether or not the Virginia National Guard will be enforcing the laws to... Um, Let's get guns the and the National Guard had to say no. They're trying to stir up a fight. We know that. You're absolutely dead on about that. You called this months ago. What is happening January 20th? The new government comes in. Well, that's when the Virginia House of Representatives, it's a commonwealth. I'm not sure what the nomenclature is, but that's their first day. That's their opening session. And a group called the Virginia Citizens Defense League, the VCDL, is going to be running buses in for what they're calling a lobby day. They don't want people waving guns. They don't want people wearing camo. There's going to be provocateurs there. Absolutely. And it's going to be like Charlottesville. Most people that went to defend the Robert E. Lee statue, obviously they weren't Nazis. They weren't Klansmen. Sure. Fake groups to go then make everybody look like Nazis. That's totally staged. If there's 10 knuckleheads waving AR-15s wearing cami with rebel flags, the Antifas, they'll be there. They'll whip out a Nazi flag. That's what the national media will focus on. As we saw in Charlottesville, obviously we've seen all throughout the United States, they're desperately trying to gin up a conflict. They're desperately trying to trick the right, some lunatic who happens to be a registered Republican into doing something stupid. Obviously, you have massive, disgusting mobs of leftists out on the streets, as we saw in Charlottesville. And it's worth noting that one of the key people at Charlottesville promised that they would return to the city, that they would make it a staging ground for all of their activism. And meanwhile, they're trying to take the guns in the entire state of Virginia. You have the police saying that they will not let it happen. This, Alex, seems to be a perfect painting or conflict happening in the United States that would allow the U.N., which, of course, is hiring. If you have experience in paramilitary warfare or in political analysis. It's amazing that the United Nations is hiring people to go and try to take away the guns. In America. In America. Military and the police are not willing to go against the Constitution and try to take away arms. So they're bringing in foreigners to try to get the guns away from people. This is exactly what Hitler did. They're going to have to try a different way because we're structured a little different. We're bigger. It doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. It doesn't mean that they're not going to try something. Some people have questioned this as whether it's really real or whether it's really that. Right. It is. I hope this answered a few questions. Because we got some calls and we say, oh, is it really that bad? Just exaggerate. No. This is legislators. This is the state governor and anyone on that side. And plus some bad state actors in the deep state who are actually trying to pull off something. They've run out of options. They ran out of options, impeachment's going nowhere.